they beat us here and uh, we went to New York. The New York players said, we're not going to come back to Minneapolis. And we beat New York in, in, at New York for the championship. That was the greatest thrill after the game. Mike had put me on his shoulders out there. The picture went all, all over the world. I'm John Kundla. I was the first coach of the Minneapolis Lakers. I was born in Star Junction, Pennsylvania in 1916, and I moved to Aliquippa when I was very young. I was about eight, nine years old when I moved to Minneapolis and I played basketball at the University of Minnesota. My first coaching job was, was, was at Ascension Church. It was a grade school. I coached grade school basketball for uh, four or five years, and then I went uh, to uh, DLSL, a high school. And from high school, I, I went into service, and I came out of service. I, I coached uh, St. Thomas before I, I joined the uh, Minneapolis Lakers. Sid Hartman uh, came to me and, and asked me to, to coach. I turned him down two times. Finally, he came to my house and stayed for an hour and talked to my wife, and I finally signed. Mike and came and signed uh, two days later. So that, that's a, the start of the Minneapolis Lakers. Mike and Wolf was, was great. He was six foot nine, always in good shape and he had a turnaround shot, and we developed a play between Pollard and Mikan that uh, really worked out. Uh, we call it a JG. Uh, uh, Pollard would throw the ball into Mikan and cut, and uh, George would either give it to him or turn around, fake, take a left hand hook shot, and he, they couldn't stop the play. Uh, we got more baskets out of that, and one more game with that play alone. The Lakers are trying to set up the plays they practiced back in Minneapolis. Mikan maneuvers for position. The defense, it would seem, rests, but not Mikan the money man. I always remember the first time Mikan joined us. I had a habit of giving three plays before we started playing games. And anyway, uh, Mikan started saying his prayer, Hail Mary, full of grace. And Paul says, will you shut up? I can't hear John Cunlow. Uh, and uh, Mikan got mad. I thought they were going to fight. I had to break him up. <laughs> and... Uh, we settled out, and, and uh, as I say, we got used to it, and we got along pretty well. It, it was a great feeling. As a coach, uh, I, I, I knew I was lucky to have Mike and Pollard, and Mickelson, Slater Martin, or Wadey Skoog, and all the different ball players. Everyone was a team, team man. I didn't have to motivate these players. They wanted, they wanted to win, and uh, coaching, you got to have patience and you keep your temper about what you say and what you do. It's a lot of times uh, you get credit for what the players do. Uh, I, I remember we had a close game and a player came to me and said, take me out, I, I got to go to the bathroom. I took him out and put another player in there and he, he, the player made three-point play and uh, we won the ball game and the, the newspaper said, what, what a great coaching job I did, substituting. The visitors from Minneapolis with a chance to sense the world's championship tonight are going with all burners. We won one of those five championships. Is, and uh, I, I was invited to go with the team to, to L.A. too, but uh, I stayed in Minneapolis and, and uh, I'm sure glad I did. Uh, then uh, I got the Hall of Fame in 1995 with uh, Bert Nicholson and I. And that was a great thrill, one of my highlights of the career. And to be inducted in the Hall of Fame is the highest honor any coach can receive. But I gotta get, I'm so grateful to the players I've had who made this possible. <laughs> Phil Jackson was one of my idols. He's, he was a real coach. He, he sat and 
and he developed ball players. Uh, he was cool. The Lakers had a good run over there, and as I say, Phil Jackson did a heck of a job. The game is so different nowadays. The talent is so much better, as I say, and the speed is a lot, lot faster. And we were never allowed to play zone defense. I saw a play when the center reached over and caught the ball one-handed and dunked it at the same time. I mean, in my days, just to touch the rim was, was something for players, but now that they jump way over the rim and the three-point play made a big difference. We played a game against Fort Wayne and ended up 17 or 16 or something. They stalled the whole game. A week later, they put the rule in. You had to shoot in so many seconds. Uh, my, my, my kid also widened the court instead of in close to the basket. They widened the court because of, of Mike. And, but now that the speed and rebounding and the fast breaks uh, are unbelievable. I followed the Lakers to watch over them. And uh, their trip out to the LA was really something. He gave us those unbelievable rings. Got the whole team out to California to meet all the other players. We had a really good time. What a nice gesture that was of the owner of the Lakers. Jump ball and big George Mikan comes through with the layup. And that basket sinks the next 88 to 84. Minneapolis wins the game and the championship. For the fourth time, the Lakers are world's best in professional basketball. To this day, I get requests for that picture to sign autograph and send back. I was so, so, so proud of that, that, that picture. I was so happy to win that game in New York. That was one of my great thrills.